The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. This is your mathematics teacher, Tita Blanche Ayuvia. And we'll begin the lesson of today by looking at the correction of the previous lesson. We read the question. Show that the circles x squared plus y squared plus 6y plus 8 equal to 0 and y squared x squared plus y squared minus 12x minus 10y minus 60 equal to 0 touch each other. Find the equation of a tangent at the point of contact. We are to show that these two circles touch each other. And we have conditions. Conditions that these two circles, if they fulfill those conditions, then we must have shown that they either touch each other internally, externally, or orthogonally. So we begin by leveling the equations, equation one and equation two, equation of the circle. And we look for the center of the first equation, C1. C1 to give us the center 0, negative 3. And its radius, R1, equal to 1. So we see here that we, we have the center for the first circle and the radius for the first circle. Now we look for the center of the second circle, which is 6, 5, and its radius R2 being equal to 11. Now we have the centers and we have the different radii. Distance between their centers, all that squared. We talk about the distance between two points. And distance between two points will have x2 minus x1, all that squared plus y2, sorry, minus y1, all that squared. This is the distance between two points. Now, if we have here as x1, y1, and x2, y2. So you see that we can take x2, 6, minus that, plus y2, 5, minus negative 3, giving us the result, square root of 5, minus y1, which is negative 3, all that squared, there's a square here. And here we're going to have 6 squared plus 8 squared. Now this is the distance between two points. And it is the distance between C1, C2. Now on the screen here, you can see distance between their centers, all that squared. So if we take the square on both sides, this square root sign is going to disappear. So now we're going to have here squared. So that is how we got the result. 6 squared plus 8 squared. And if we should simplify that, we're going to have the distance between the centers to be square root of 
100, which is equal to 10. So we have 64, sorry, 64 plus 36, which will give us 100. And the square root of 100 is 10 units. Now, looking at the right guy, you have the distance between their centers. We have obtained here that the distance between C1 and C2 equal to 10. Now look at the value, the values of the different radar. We have 11 and we have 1. You discover that if we take 11, take away 1, it will give us 10. Therefore, what has been done is we can have this condition means that the distance between the center is the same as subtracting subtracting their radar which means that we're going to have here 11 minus 1 equal to 10 and this condition is the condition for two circles that touch internally and so by proving this we must have we have proven that the two circles given actually intersect and they touch internally now the next part of the question says a, write the equation of tangents of the tangents okay that is the line right passes through the point where they they meet because it's one line if they meet at one point it means we have if we have a line that passes there that line is tangential to both circles so we should look for the equation of that line that is a tangent. So the first thing we do is we solve the two equations simultaneously by taking equation 1 minus equation 2. And then we're going to obtain a straight line. And that equation is the equation of the tangent required from us. We continue with our lessons under the module plane geometry and solid figures. And as subtopic we have, subtopics we have, Circle geometry, complex numbers, vectors, integration, first order differential equations with separable variables, location of the roots of any equation, and then we have curve sketching. Looking at the continuation of lessons under circle geometry, we have the length of a tangent from an external point to a circle, finding the coordinates of the points of intersection of a circle and a line. The equation of a circle through the point of intersection of two given circles and a, and a point. Finding the point of intersection of two circles. Condition for circles to touch. Equation of circle that passes through the point of intersection of a given straight line and a circle. Then we have the locus of a point. Radical axis of two circles. Equation of circle that touches the coordinate axis. It is highlighted because that is the topic we are treating today. Then we have equation of a circle passing through two points and it center lies on a line. We move on to the lesson of today titled Equation of a circle that touches the coordinate axis. As planned for this lesson, we have the objective, prerequisite, real life situation, learning activity, recall, application exercises, and the assignment. So we'll go on by looking at the objective. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to find the equation of a circle that touches the coordinate axis. As prerequisite, you are expected to be able to sketch a circle on the Cartesian plane, given the center and the radius. We're testing the prerequisite. Sketch the circle. We have the circle x minus 2, all that squared, plus y minus 3, all that squared, equal to 4, on the Cartesian plane. We have to sketch this circle on a Cartesian plane.
So we have the equation of the circle as x minus 2 all that squared plus y minus 3 all that squared equal to 4. Now to sketch that circle is a sketch. So the center of the circle, as you can see, is 2, 3, and the radius is 2. The radius is 2. Now what you have to understand is that you have a potential plane, x axis, y axis. The radius simply tell, gives you the distance you will move from one axis to the center. We mean like they say the radius is 2. Using the grid that you have, you say you are moving two units from the y axis to meet the center of the circle, and you move two units from the x axis to meet the center of the circle. Now, the center is given as 2, 3. So, this is the center. Now, what is the radius? The radius you are moving, the radius of the circle you are moving. Two units from, not from all the axes, sorry. You are moving two units. Let's start from, from the y axis. Two units to move from the y axis to the center. I just gave a statement here that is not correct, please. It's not correct. You don't, you, you don't take the y axis and the x axis as the measures for you to come out with the radius, to measure the radius. No. No. The radius, if they give you a radius two units, it means from the center, from the center of the circle, you move two units to meet the circumference of the circle. Which means that what? If you are here, you move two units to meet the circumference. Means you have one, one, two. So the next point, a point on your circumference will be somewhere here. You move one, two. The next point on your circle will be somewhere there. And then you move one, Two, the next one will be there, and the same thing upwards one, two. So you will have something of this form. So, following that, we have the diagram that is the point, the center of that point of this of the circle two, three. Now, if you follow that, you discover that from here you have one, two units, one, two units, one, two units, one, two units. Now, if you link all those four points, we're going to get uh, the circle. And the circle with the radius 2 units. So we have sketched that circle. Now we move on to look at the real life situation. By drawing the circle, x minus 4, all that squared. I am reading the question as usual. I expect you to follow up and you already know what to do. By drawing the circle, x minus 4, all that squared, plus y minus 4, all that squared, equal to 16. On a Cartesian plane, Bob could easily state the coordinates of the point at which the circle meets with the coordinate axis. In a question-answer competition, where Bob has just two seconds to reflect and get the point of contact of the circle and the coordinate axis to gain a bonus point, what can he do to quickly get the answer? So at the end of the lesson, we are going to look at the solution together. So look at the learning activity. On separate Cartesian planes, Draw the circles S1, center 1, 1, and radius 1 unit. S2, center 2, 2, and radius 2 units. We have S1, center 1, 1, radius 1 unit. S2, Center two two and radius two units. Circle S three with center three three and radius three units. State your
observations after each diagram, which means that when we draw the diagram, we are going to state our observation after the diagram. So we have the first one. Now we are plotting the point. You see the center is 1, 1. So we go to where we have 1, 1. We have the point 1, 1. And you see the radius is 1 unit. From the center, you move 1 unit to get the next point to form your circle. So from the center, you move 1 unit. That's why we have the point here. From the center, we move 1 unit vertically downwards. We have the next point. From the center, the next unit, one unit vertically upwards to get those points we have. Now, connecting those four points will give us the circle with center one one and radius one unit. So that is the first circle we have obtained. And what do we observe? Because we say in, after the diagram, we give our observation. What do we observe? We discover that the set, the, the, this circle touches the x-axis. And the y axis at the same coordinates. The y coordinate there is one, x coordinate there is one. And you discover that what the length of the radius or the value of the radius is the same as the x coordinate and the y coordinate for the center. So, as observation, the circle S1 with radius one unit and center one one touches the x and y axis. At the points 1, 0, and 0, 1. That means when you have a center 1, 1 and radius 1, it will touch the x and the y axis. If it touches the x axis at this point, this point is a point 1, 0. 1, 0. And the other point here, if it touches here, this point is the point 0. One. So, we have as observation that circle touches the x axis, the coordinate axis at the point 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now, let's look at the next one S2, center 2, 2. Now, let's go to where we have 2, 2. 2, 2. Here we have 2, 2. Now, we move how many, the, the number of units given to, for us here for the radius. It's two units. So from the center, we move two units. One, two, one, two, to get the next point. One, two, and one, two. Now linking those points, we're going to have the circle. That is the circle with radius two units. The same thing happens here again. You discover that word. This circle touches the y-axis at two, at the point two, zero, and it touches the x-axis at the point two, zero. So, what is our observation? The circle S2 with radius 2 and center 2, 2 touches the X and the Y axis at the point 2, 0 and 0, 2 respectively. You discover that when the radius is equal, when the value of the radius is equal to the coordinates of X and Y in the center, you discover that that circle will touch the coordinate axis at the same value of x at the x-axis and the same value of y on the y-axis. Now we have the third circle, S3. We center 3, 3 and radius 3. Now we plot that. The center, we have 3, 3. Meaning that from the center, we move 3 units to get the next point that will lie on the circle. So we have 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Now, linking those points gives us the circle with radius 3 units. Observation, the circle S3 with radius 3 units and center 3, 3 touches the X and the Y axis at the points 3, 0, and 0, 3 respectively. There is already a pattern that is being followed here. There is already a pattern. And that pattern is given as you have a center, A, A, radius, A. Then that circle will touch the X axis at the point A, 0, and 0, A. This is the pattern that is being followed there. 
if you want to give a summary of that, this is the pattern that is being obtained. Now, find the equation of all three circles. We want to write the equation of circles. So that to write the equation of a circle, we need the center and we need the radius. We have the center, we have the radius for, for S1. So, for center, for equation of circle S1, we're going to obtain the equation x minus 1 all that squared plus y minus 1 all that squared equal to 1 squared. For circle 2, we're going to have x minus 2 all that squared plus y minus 2 all that squared equal to 2 squared. And for circle 3, we're going to have x minus 3 all that squared plus y minus 3 all that squared equal to 3 squared. Now, the circle x minus a all that squared plus y minus a all that squared equal to a squared touches the x and y axis at the points a0 and 0a. Just the pattern I have given you here. You have the equation that from this equation you come out with the center and the radius and then you follow this pattern to come out with the coordinates of the points at which the circle will touch the coordinate axis. Now we have as recall a circle that touches the coordinate axis at the points A0 and 0A has center AA and radius A. Its equation is given as x minus a all that squared plus y minus a all that squared equal to a squared. Or in the general form as, as you can see displayed there, x squared plus y squared plus 2 into negative a x plus 2 into negative a y plus a squared equal to 0. Now we have as diagram. This diagram is just to illustrate or to, to well describe what we have just mentioned in the recall there. That is, that circle with radius A and the center AA. Now we look at the application exercises. The first question, find the equation of a circle whose radius is eight units and, it's, and it touches both axes. Find the equation of a circle whose radius is 8 units. They are giving you the, the, that the radius is 8 units and it touches the uh, it touches both axes. If it touches both axes, automatically you already have the x value will be equal to the y value. Therefore, the center of that circle will simply be 8, 8 with radius 8 units. And so with the center and the radius, we can write the equation of the circle as x minus 8 all that squared plus y minus 8 all that squared equal to 64 or in the general form like this. Second question. What is the equation of a circle which touches both axes and passes through the point 1, 3? Hmm. Now we are being asked to give an equation of a circle that touches both axes and passes through the point 1, 3. Here, it is a little bit complicated because you have not been given the radius. And so you have to come out, you have to, we are going to work out the value for the radius and we are going to work out the center of the circle before we can write the equation of the circle. Now, what do we do? We need the center of the circle. Now, let us assume that the, since it is set in the question that the circle touches both coordinate axes, then we are free to let the center of our circle be AA and R to be A. That's the radius to be A. We are free to say that because they say the, same, the circle touches both coordinate axes. Now, hence, equation of the circle, we use now the form of equation of the circle where we will say x minus g all that squared plus y minus f all that squared equal to r. We replace g and f by a and r by a, r squared by a to give us that equation that we have displayed on the screen. Expanding 
Okay, now this circle, the circle we have them here, they say this circle passes through the point one three. Now, with this idea of this circle passing through this point one three, it means that if we substitute this point one three in the equation of the circle, we are going to obtain the equation. 1 minus a all r squared plus 3 minus a all r squared equal to a squared. Expanding that equation, we are going to obtain the quadratic equation 10 minus 8a plus a squared equal to 0. And we'll have a to be equal to 4 plus or minus root 6. This shows that we are going to obtain two equations of circles. Because the first value of a there will be a equal to 4 plus root 6 and a will equal to 4 minus root 6. So we're going to use the two. We have x minus a. a. So remember that we're looking for the value of a so that we can come and replace a here to give us the required equation of that of the circle. So we have two values of a. So substituting those two values of a there, we're going to obtain two equations of circles. So these are the equations of the circles we're going to obtain. X minus 4 plus root 6 other squared. That's the first value of A, giving the first equation. And then using the second value of A gives the second equation of the circle. Now the third question. What is the equation of a circle which has both axes as its tangent? And passes through the point one two. Now we talk about both axes. I want to specify here that we talk about the both coordinate axes. That's the x axis and the y axis. It's just an omission. It's an omission in the question. What is the equation of a circle which has both coordinate axes as its tangent and passes through the point one two? Okay, since we don't know the center of the circle, we don't know the radius, and those are the two things we need in order to write the equation of the circle, we will let the center of the circle we want to write to be AA. Why do we say AA? Because we have been told in the question that that circle touches both coordinate axes. And if it touches both coordinate axes, we are free to say that the radius, the value of the radius is equal to the value for each of the coordinates in the center of the circle. So we're going to have R to go to A and the center AA. Now with that, we substitute all those values in the equation as we rightfully had. X minus A equals to all that squared plus Y minus A all that squared equal to A squared. Now we substitute the coordinates of the point through which the circle we are looking for passes through. And they say the point is the point 1, 2. So substituting that point in the equation that we had and simplifying, we're going to obtain a quadratic equation. And looking at that quadratic equation, we discover that they have distinct roots, showing that we are still going to come out with two different circles. So... So, to the value of a now back into that equation, we're going to have x minus 1 other squared plus y minus 1 other squared equal to 1. And the other equation will be x minus 5 other squared plus y minus 5 other squared to be equal to 25. And these are the equations of circles that is required from us as the question it's demanded. Now we look at the real life situation. I read the question again. By drawing the circle x minus 4 order squared plus y minus 4 order squared equal to 16 on a Cartesian plane, Bob could easily state the coordinates of the points at which the circle meets with the coordinate axis. Now, in a question-answer competition where Bob has just two seconds to reflect and get the point of contact of the circle and the coordinate axis to gain a bonus point, what can he do to quickly get the answer? I will just quickly say that Bob 
need to use the pattern we develop in our activity. Bob needs to use the pattern that we develop, and the pattern says that if you have a circle, y minus a, that this circle touches the coordinate axis, and you have, it means that the center here will be a, a, and the radius will be a. Therefore, this circle will touch the coordinate axis at the point 0, a and a zero. So you just need to bring up to, to have this concept or this, this pattern and then look at the equation that he was given and come out with the center. And the center of that circle is 4, 4. I think the center is 4, 4. It means that the radius is 4, which means that what? The coordinate axis will be 0, 4 and 4, Zero. So in two seconds, if he can get this pattern up well in his head, in two seconds he can just reason out that. Just looking at the equation, you'll just know that the coordinate will be 0, 4, 4, 0. And we now have this question. We take this question as for the assignment, for the assignment, and we're going to correct that in the next lesson. I read the question. Find the equation of the circle that touches both coordinate axes and passes through the point 3, 2. So this marks the end of our lesson. And the next lesson will be titled Equation of a Circle Passing Through Two Points and Its Center Lies on a Straight Line. Ona tege majang matege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen Ngani bana matege mot Ngani lakiri watege ndong Yeso kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen